Hello and welcome to the last talk of the 2020 season and our guest is Steve Smith, FRPS, who has for years been taking street and documentary images both in the UK and abroad. Hi Steve. Good evening Peter. So let's go back to the beginning. You used to have a Kodak Brownie first off, uh, but when did you first start taking photography seriously? I think everybody had a brownie or Instamatic and um, I always remember sort of loading up the film in, in a brownie. You can just about see the uh, the numbers of the negatives being rolled around. Um, so I don't think that's anything unusual. Most people started off with, with a brownie. Um, I started photography. It was on a whim, really. I had a friend who was getting married and I thought, wouldn't it be nice to, to buy a new camera? So off I went down to the local camera shop in, in High Wycham and bought uh, Minolta XG2, you know, an SLR camera. Um, it's then I realised I knew nothing about how, how, how to use a camera. So you then learned, didn't you, by going to night school? Yeah, I, um, I thought, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to learn how to use this camera. So um, I signed up for an, um, an, an evening class. At, um, it, was in, it was in High Wycombe. And I was fortunate, the chap who ran it used to work for the RAF in, in the war. And um, he was an old hand at um, Darton Techniques and so on. So I, I went there for well, a, a whole whole term, I suppose, uh, three months. And um, I learned everything from, from Ted. And uh, yeah, from there, I never looked back. And of course, in those days, we didn't have YouTube or anything to get ideas from, did we? Now, this is the thing. Today, if you want to learn a, a technique, you just you just Google it, you, or you go on YouTube. Um, going back to the seventies, eighties, if you if you wanted knowledge, you you might buy amateur photographer, or you join a, a camera club. And um, I mean, originally the Royal Photographic Society was set set up to exchange knowledge, and um, so it, it, it was a great resource. But um, yeah, that's. Uh, that's the way you used to do it in those days. I'll say those days. Didn't seem that long ago. A lot of trial and error then, and of course it was expensive because it was film. It was expensive. Um, film, well I suppose I never had that much time to take pictures, so I just made sure I made use of the film. The expensive thing was the print paper. You might spend an evening in a dark room, and in the morning most of, most of the prints have been in a dustbin because it's always you know, experimenting and, and trying to, well, I suppose you're trying to maintain the quality and produce a good print. And that took a lot of experimenting. And of course you were a project manager. So were you always pretty technical anyway? Yeah, I, I spent my life um, as a, either a design engineer or a draftsman or, 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 or designer. So it's attention to, to, um, to detail, I suppose. Um, you know how things should look, and um, you just have to work, work, work at it. Work at it, and, and it's the same these days with the uh, digital images. Um, you know, taking it is, is one part of the um, of, of the finished print, but the post production, whether it's in a dark room or in Photoshop, it is a big part. And in those days, as indeed now, you used to mosey around London taking street images. Yeah. Uh, what is going on here? Well. Um, this was, we used to do quite a lot, lot of work in, in um, the West End of London and um, in Soho there was lots of advertising companies around. So I, we used to get up there just before seven in the morning um, and this particular morning I parked my car in, in Golden Square and um, I saw this scene so I, I ran back a couple of blocks to get a Pentax 6-7 Mark, Mark 1 and when I came back these policemen were still trying to revive this man on the floor. Um, they, they tried in vain, and um, the ambulance crew came, and uh, and they, they they took him away. But it's, it's when he first approached the scene, he, you've got to try and compose it. So you know, I had a roll of um, one twenty six by seven film, uh, ten shots. So this was this was the last frame, and this this is the frame for me that works. Um, it's unfortunate about the man on the floor, but that's life, um, but people that live on the streets. Um, but it's the crowd behind, and it's the white horse. Um, I, I, sometimes you need a bit of luck. And if it had been a dark horse, 
it wouldn't have worked so well. And here's the personal one, uh, your daughter and your yeah. first grandchild. Yeah, this is, um, this is my first grandchild, um, Jake. And uh, yeah, I've got, I've got the call, you know, um, from, from Matthew, you know, you're, 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 the baby's been born. And um, I said, hold on, I'm on my way to the hospital, you know, because the last thing any, any daughter, young mother um, wants to see is a camera. Um, but I was fortunate they were still in the actual delivery room and um, I didn't want to have the picture taken. But, but sometimes we know what's best for them, don't we? So, yeah, I just quickly composed it and, um, and, and, and took this memorable picture. I got that impression they weren't that happy. But, <laughs> you know, but it's a very interesting picture. Was it always black and white then in those days for you? Um, well, this, this one, the, the first one was the last picture I took before I had this hiatus in photography, 1986 or 85, that first one. The second one was um, 2006. So there's a big gap between the two. Um, but when I came back to photography after this long break, you just couldn't print decent digital pictures. Um, not until Epson bought, bought out a, a three black ink printer, then you could start producing decent prints. And that was, that was one of them. Mm. And then, of course, you did eventually start going abroad. How did your fascination with Cuba start? Well, it was just a holy destination, but I will take my camera. So, so we booked, the first time I went there in 2006, we booked a week in Havana, then we booked a week in Veradero. Um, it, I was like a child in a candy shop. When you go to Havana and to Cuba, it, it, it's just, it, it, it's amazing. Now, now our pictures everywhere. And um, when we ended, ended up in Veradero, on a beach, um, in the middle of nowhere, actually it's the last place I want to be, I want to be back in Havana. But uh, we hired a car, we went to other places, we went to Remedios, we went to Trinidad. Um, and it was then on the way back, I thought, there's all the pictures I should have taken, or what I could have taken. Um, so that was a, a, a bit of a recce. And uh, yeah, and from then, I went back three more times. Of course, looking at your images from Cuba, um, I suppose what I get most from them is energy. Yeah, I, th I think... They are very vibrant. I mean, it's a South American nations. I, I know uh, Cuba's in the Caribbean, but they're they're up for a, for for life. They're full of life, and you've only got to point your camera at somebody, and I want you to take that picture. It's not we're not used to that in this country or, or in Europe. Um, this picture here is there was a downpour in a square, and it was packed, and it emptied within seconds apart from these children pl playing, playing in the rain. So I just went outside, I, I, we jumped into a cafe, my wife Jenny was ordering some coffee. I took the camera outside under an awning and I started to take pictures of, of these children. I didn't say a word to them. They just naturally pose. You, well, she, this is a young girl, she just, she just uh, performed different poses. And this, this is one of them. It was, yeah. Yeah, a special moment. You need a bit of luck, and this is one of them. And they're obviously having loads of fun, aren't they? And it comes across. Yeah, well, the, the rain come down behind them from, as a pipe coming off a being discharged from a parapet roof. So there's a lot of water going down there. Yeah, they're having a great time. Now, you describe yourself as a documentary photographer as well as a street photographer. Hmm. What are the essential differences, would you say, between them? Between a street and documentary? Well, if you look at contemporary street photography, um, if you go and lens culture, um, the street photography festival or the Miami street photography festival, you, you really have a, a different type of street photography. Um, whereas you just can't, have, you just can't take a picture in the street. There has to be ideally multi-layered things going on within the picture. Um, so this one we're seeing now that, that I, I would call that documentary. And, 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 and not street. But now it's, it's like any genre of photography, we have this overlap. And of course you do like bodies of work, don't you, as well as single images? Yeah, I think it's important to work in, in, in bodies of work. It gives you structure 
and um, it, you give yourself a brief. You, you know what you want to try and achieve. You're not going out and trying to just take a, a lot of individual pictures. Um, and that's what a lot of people, especially when they start, is they want to take pictures of everything. Um, and you've really got to curtail yourself and, and, and be more focused. They also got inside people's houses in Cuba. Was that difficult? I, I find it difficult. Um, I walk past this house and um, we can see an amputee here. And you say to yourself, well, you know, I'm, I'm, at this time I was doing my first fellowship and I'm thinking, yes, this, this would fit in well with the panel. How do I ask a woman, can I take a picture of you? Because it's quite obvious why. Well, it, to her it would be. Um, but I just loved this. In Remedios, most of the films were timber and um, old, going back to the 50s. Here we see the LPs going back to the pre-revolution. Um, so after 10, 15 minutes, I, I, I sum, summed up the courage and asked her, and the son was there at the time, and she, she said, please come in. Please come in. So I was in there for a, a minute. Um, I don't work with tripods, so I work quite quickly. And um, again, you, you start off, the first few pictures were with her and her son, but you end up with the picture you want. And this is the picture I wanted. And as you said earlier, there are great images everywhere, aren't there, in Cuba? Oh, you're driving along the car and you suddenly see a shed in someone's front garden. And in that shed is this barber shop. He works from home. You know, he's still working there today, which I would have thought with COVID. And um, yes, yeah, so you stop and get out and you just ask them and they're, they're quite willing to you take the picture. What sort of equipment were you using at this time? Um, this first one, this was a Canon um, 1DS Mark III. So digital camera. But of course, at one stage, I remember you saying you went back um to a Leica, didn't you was that yeah. for the uh, uh london olympics well <clears throat> I, I shot canon from 2004 to 2012 and i think what brought to head peter is, is you, you buy an expensive camera a 1ds mark three at the time was six thousand pounds then they launched the 1dx and all of a sudden the value of your camera it plummets, plummets from six thousand to two thousand I thought, yeah, this is not sustainable, this. Um, for the type of photography I do, I can shoot it on film. I went back to film. Oh, so what are you using now? Um, I've, I've, I've gone around in circles a, a little bit, but I shoot, um, I've got 35mm film. I've got 6x7 film, Pentax, 6x7 Mark II. I've got an Intrepid 5.4 camera. Um, but I've also got um, a Leica M10 digital camera and a Canon EOS, EOS R digital camera, mirrorless. But they're all different tools for, for, um, for different jobs. Um, depends what you're doing. Yeah, that's a lot of equipment. Uh, now, this is part of your project called Beneath the Games Umbrella when the London Olympics were on. What was your objective with this project? Well, my objective wasn't uh, as it turned out, but the aim was to try and capture um, London during the Olympics, but not necessarily at, at the parks. Um, I wanted to capture the, the life and the visitors to the country, um, particularly in London. But if you remember, um, at the time, the, um, the BBC and the Sky, all the news channels were, were reporting how quiet the West End was. So that sort of drove a hole in, in, into the, the whole concept. So I had to try and dig myself out, out of a hole. It was too late to get press, um, press passes to get into the Olympics. Um, so I just had to do the, the best I could. And this next one is a classic uh, street image during the same period. Mm. Um, his head looks like the heads on the poster behind, don't they? Yeah, well, you, 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 do, you do need some luck, but... Um, yeah, I saw this advert, um, the, the, the hoarding behind this chap, and um, it started off as a skeleton running through to a fully clothed athlete. I thought, all I need is somebody to, you know, to, to walk along that looks similar. But um, 
this chap gave me more than that. You know, um, the fact that he's has got a great deal of hair and he's quite slim, and just that turn turn of the head gives the impression he's, he could be coming out out of the out of the awning. Well, as you seem to be hinting at, you do need a bit extra, don't you, in these images? Uh, but a lot of street stuff doesn't quite work out. What do you think is wrong? Is it a lack of patience on behalf of the photographer not waiting for that decisive moment? Yeah, you've got to have a lot, a lot of patience with, with street photography, and you, you, you've got to have a CNI as well. Um, if, if you look at some of the our present uh, street photographers, Matt Stewart, for instance, um, spends a lot of time trying to get get, get the right co composition. And here we have the British at play in the Olympic Park. Yeah, can't, here we are. Yeah, this is um, this is an Olympic Park. I managed to get um, some tickets to, to, to go there for the first week. And it's lovely. I mean, I actually met the, the chap who designed the gardens for the Olympics. And um, he was beside himself that all, all these the people congregated on the, the grass and the plants in the gardens. So they were just having a having a picnic. I just walked up to this, this is shot on film, 35 mil film. I just walked up to this girl and, um, and took a picture and walked away. And she probably didn't know whether I took a picture or not. You do like quite heavy blacks, don't you, in your images? I like blacks. You know, I, I think a good black and white image should have a full range, range of tones. Um, with good blacks and, and good whites. And who's this next snazzy chap? Well, I think we all recognise him as so, Mr. Oh, this one. Um, when, when you see somebody like this in Oxford Street, this is outside Topshop, and um, he, you think, do you think if I asked him, would he want this picture taken? Well, he looks like he does, so I just asked Anthony, his name was and I took his picture. He's an extrovert, snazzy dresser, and um, yeah. Very good. Well, moving away from the games, uh, who are these gorgeous looking creatures up in Scotland? Well, yeah, this is North Berwick, which is um, 25 miles um, east of Edinburgh. And uh, once a year they have a charity raft race. And uh, this is Team Marilyn. So they're not three heavily built Scottish lasses, they're, um, they're three guys. So in front of them is Craig Leith, and um, we're looking north in, into Fife. But our events, such as this cavalry regiments meet, how do you get to hear about them? Well, um, when we get the slide up, this goes back to a friend of mine, um, a chap called Bill Carden, FRPS. Um, ex power member, he used he used to take pictures of the old comrades meeting. So I knew knew it used to go on once a year, and it was something I, I wanted to go to. Um, sadly, he passed away a few years ago, um, but I still occasionally go up there. Yeah, so so uh, it's, it's just you got to have your nose to the ground, I suppose, and find out what's going on. But this is very unusual. You know, Love this image, by the way. Superb narrative uh, and movement. And uh, in fact, the next one is a great example of how to make a fairly simple looking image dynamic because it's got great energy and it's the look on his face, isn't it, as he's running along. Yeah, this was taken in Piccadilly um, during the rain. I think, we, you know, as photographers, we have opportunities in, in the rain and um, I just got down, you know, crouched down and wait for people to, to, to walk along. I saw the bus first. So I just wait for people to walk into the picture. And this chap ran along with his, with his coffee. So and here's another example of how to pack information into a street image. Of course, um, Margaret Thatcher's funeral. But there's a lot of information in this one, isn't there? Yeah, I went up there for the funeral and um, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get much. I didn't get much. Um, this was going back to Oxford Circus um, tube station, and um, they had the papers there. And um, I, I saw these buses going down, and, and I know she, you know, divided opinions, and um, some people hated her, and some people loved her. 
Um, but it's something, this is not my personal opinion, but it's a picture. Did so, you realise when you took the image that on the bus it said oh, Evil Dead? Oh, yeah. You know, yes. I saw the buses and they came down every every few minutes. So it was important to get get the bus in the picture. It's, it's, it's not luck. So we should talk about your fellowships. You have two, of course, fine art and travel. How much do they mean to you? I think the, 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 the first one, they're both, they're both very important to me, but when, when you actually obtain it, you go through this journey and um, you get feedback and you have ideas, but once you're on the road and you think you're going in, in the right direction and you finally get there, it, it, it means the world, you know, is it, a, if you reach that standard, then, you, you, you know, you can, you can free yourself up. You, you start to do other things. You've done the fellowship, you've ticked it off and uh, yeah, you can sit back and enjoy it. Okay. Well, we can't see both of them, but let's look at the travel fellowship. Uh, first of all, quick run through the images. So there we are. You must be very proud. Some uh, cracking images there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think this is the thing with, with the body of work that you actually look back and if it means something and you're proud, it is worse. Um, and I think there's some some genres of photography that um, you don't get that same feedback. You know, it's a, it's a it's a body of work and it stays there. Yeah, I mean, of course, you, you can look at your images time and time again and see something different most of the time. Yeah. Let's go through them then, shall we, one by one. Um, and you can tell us a little bit about each one. Yeah, I, I tried to actually um, go, this is, I went back in 2012, Kira. So we had a, a, a 2006, a 2008, and this is the third time I went, went to Kira. And I tried to shoot it all on film. Um, Unfortunately, only 75% of the images are shot on film. And I suppose the tricky part was to make sure that I had this cohesion across the digital and, and the film images. But um, individual images, yeah, this is, um, I call this sort of the, the Havana call centre. <laughs> um, you know, um, you're lucky to find a working phone. Um, high contrast lighting is difficult to work with sometimes, um, but you can use it to, to your advantage. We got this, this painted dado rail on the wall, and with the shadow ju just above it. So it's just a typical Havana street scene. And as you said earlier, people are generally very happy to cooperate. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, um, if, if you've got somebody with, in this case, a, a puppy, um, she thinks I'm taking a picture of the puppy, but we all know when I'm not, you know, I, I want her. She's, um, her, her, her personality radiates out, even though we've got a show at the field and, 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 we, and we've got a small puppy. But I, I, I'm just amazed at the amount of detail that film can, can capture. And this was taken on a 35 mil film, like, like a film camera. But they and, love their dogs, so I had to be part of the panel. And uh, more animals, lots of horses in Cuba, equally keen to cooperate, it seems. That's right. There's lots of horses, lots of carts, and, and so on. We just tried taking Trinidad before breakfast, and um, I, I, I lined up this shot. I saw this horse, horse tethered to this, you know, to this, this, this window. So I composed the picture, hoping the cowboy would come out out the wooden door. They came out the adjacent door. Um, so I had to recompose the picture and wait for them to come out again. But meanwhile, we've got black vultures in the air. We've got a man on the roof re repairing the pantiles. And I'm just saying, please, please come out now, come out now. Um, so I've got this picture, I'm happy with it, but I could have had even more, but that's, that's photography. And as we know, there are some fabulous uh, entrance halls and marble staircases. Oh, yeah, I mean, some of the, the they've got some gems in, in, um, in Havana. Um, th this must be a very plush building. We've got marble stairs and um, newel posts and, and, and handrails. And um, I don't normally use a tripod. Um, this this might look composed and set up this picture, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I set it up so that I, was gonna, I wanted to get people walking past slowly up, up the stairs and um, had the camera set up on a tripod with a cable release, and this young boy just sat on the step and looked into the camera. And I just, I just pressed the shutter release, and it was just one shot, and that's how it was. I love this next one. Uh, was this a setup, or did you just come across this? No, this is upstairs from the previous one, um, and um, the architectural details are everywhere, but. Um, in this opening would have been French doors, and in this first floor space, there would have been three pairs of French doors. But now it's used to air the laundry from a, for a restaurant on the third floor. And um, this this girl, she knew I was there, but she was listening to music on, on, with her headphones. And um, I just wandered around and took some pictures. And she she ignored ignored, ignored me, which is perfect. So I just had to, you know a few moments and children as we've already seen are an absolute gift aren't they when you're photographing in cuba yeah they can be i try not to, to take too many um children um even if it's in cuba but yeah it's it, it generally not a problem yeah this, this young girl um there, there's a, a fence just just as where i'm stood on the other side of the fence um and she's playing outside the front door and um, I, I just liked, liked her demeanour, um, uh, uncombed hair, and the way that the toys discarded to one side. So there's, there's lots going on here. She's trying to creep along the wall to get out, get out, out of the frame. And um, because with a Leica, you can't see a, a, a rangefinder. You can't see the right-hand side, of the right-hand corner. So she was out of the picture, but it works. And uh, laid back though the people generally are, there aren't some, shall we say, with attitude. Uh, this taxi driver looks a bit wary of you. Yeah, this is the this is the rush hour, and um, you never quite know what we're actually going to get. This is um, the left hand drive car, so he's a passenger, and, and the guy in the back's a passenger. Um, so they're they're still at red lights, and I'm just focus, focusing on them, and um, and taking the picture, but. Yeah, you, you never know quite how it's going to work, but um, you just take a picture and smile and just hope it's, it's all all right. And as you mentioned earlier, composition is clearly a very key element for you. Yeah, I mean, if, if you get too tight, you, you lose the columns behind. Um, I, I think anybody who's been to Cuba and Havana will know that that's where it's taken. It's all about comp composition. This is taken at um, a boxing club in, in Havana 
And um, this is one of the chaps just uh, warm, warming down after sparring. But um, it's important to, to include the environment. It you know, tells a story. If it's too close, if it's too tight, the, the picture starts to lose its narrative. Exactly. And of course, we do have to look at one of your most famous images, the chap dressed in women's clothing with a dog on his head. Now, what's that all about? Well, you know, you, you, in street photography, you know, I've called this street. It's not, it's not social documentary. Well, it is really, but it's not set up. Um, Remedios, they have a big festival once a year on, on Christmas Eve. And lots of visitors that come to, come to town. And I was photographing some boys on, on a trampoline. And I turned around and this man was carrying his dog. And he looked at me and he put the dog on his head. And <laughs> it was so close, I couldn't focus properly. I had to step back <laughs> to, to get the 35mm lens in focus. Um, because I'm shooting on a Leica MP, 35mm um, uh, film. Um, and it's everything's manual, manual exposure, man of focus. So I had to make sure that um, he was in focus and thank God he was. Yeah, well, it's a great shot. Um, now, the first time I saw this next one, I didn't immediately notice the boy's head at the bottom of the door. Now, was he there all the time or did he pop up while you were taking the image? Oh, no, he, he was there all the time. Um, oh, this one was shot in colours, so it's a, a digital image. Um, so I, I knew he was there, and um, and the television behind. But it's late in the day. Remedy also, you can see the the shadow of the nose of the man. It's nearly sunset, um, so you get his lo lovely texture on on the walls. Um, yeah, I, I knew he was there, but a lot of people m miss it sometimes. Well, you love boxing images, and this one's a classic portrait, um, which I know you're very proud of because when the journal moved to the, a new format, it featured on the front cover. Yeah, this is taken on a 35mm um, film, film, yeah, um, film camera. And um, yeah, I, I was so pleased, you know, I, I got a call from the editor saying that um, they want to show my travel panel. Um, could they use this for, for, the, for the, uh, the front cover? Would I mind if they cropped it? Well, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I just, you know, I just um, working digital for so many years, and 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 seeing you can get the detail in film still, um, with the beads of sweat running down his chest, and, and it, yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm proud of that. It's a, it's a nice shot. It wasn't easy to get, but um, I got it. It wasn't set up either. Um, he was just sort of, um, resting after sparring. And uh, he would not look at me. I had to make a noise. So he just looked at me, glanced at me. I took the picture. And that was it. One picture. No, that's a good one. And here we have the decisive moment personified in a way. How long do you have to wait to get this one? Well, <clears throat> um, this is the Malacon in, 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 in Havana. I saw these boys, you know, these, these, these three boys, a man and two young boys. They were playing in the, the, the surf breaking over the uh, over the wall, and um, I had quite a few opportunities here because um, I had a roll of FP4 on the camera, and I just had to wait and for the waves and different positions. I have a whole series on of these with the man on the wall in different positions and the boys, but um, it wasn't too difficult because I knew it was the picture there, so you just had to. Wait your time, wait 10, 15 minutes, and um, hopefully you, you, you have a picture you, you, you're happy with. Patience again. Well, mm. now we have a very unusual composition. I know you're someone who doesn't particularly stick to the rules. Uh, no. I mean, we've got the dog's head cut off. The girl is walking away from the camera at an awkward angle. We've got the people on the chair with their heads cut off. But it absolutely works. Yeah, so, sometimes you just got to take, take the picture. You know, you can't, I'm an hour about some, some of them. Uh, you know, I'm walking behind this girl. Um, I've got the sun coming to, you know, towards us. I'm with the Leica 35 mil. So again, it's manual exposure, manual focusing. So I'm trying to guess the focus distance, first of all. Um, and I think this is only two, two shots. This is the, the second shot. And okay, the, the dog head goes out, out of the picture. But her head is slanted to such, 
she's only just caught sight of the dog. Like the photographer, he just got the dog in. But um, I, I, I just like those little quirks. Yeah, quirky is the word, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Another barber shop I see uh, you've got here. Um, but let's move to the next one because this really intrigues me. Sort of graphic type image, isn't it? Yeah, John, uh, yeah, this is. I came across this street scene and I saw the shadows on the wall. And um, sometimes you come across a, a location and you think there's a, there's a picture there to be had. Um, and you've just got to wait. So I waited for a couple of people to walk along. And I'm not a, a lover of finding an awning or, or, or some artwork where you just wait for someone to walk in front of it. Well, this, this boy, he walked from the right hand side, he walked around the corner and he stopped at the wall and he looked up at the shadows. And I thought, that'll do me. I have that one, thank you very much. And um, after he walked off, I, I thought, I wonder what he was looking at. So I walked over to the wall and looked on the wall and there was nothing there. He posed for the camera. And um, that's typical Cubans, you know, they, they will, they will do this, they're playing, playing mind games. Um, yeah, thank well, you. Well, you could not have placed him better, could you? No. Um, no. Of course, there's a lot of hanging around in Cuba. Uh, you can see this sort of thing everywhere. But um, as for a bit of action, here's how not to let off a firework. Yeah, this is, um, I just decided to try, as I said before, trying to shoot it all on film. This was taken on a, a Pentax 6-7 camera, Mark II, with portal film. But what I did, I used a rear shutter sync on, on the flash. So the, the, the shutter speed is one fifteenth of a second, just to try and get some movement in, in the picture. Yeah, this is, um, they collect these rockets that don't go off and then let them off by hand. And if we carry on beyond your fellowship, this is the uh, same festival. Now is, is this bit of, nice bit of color here? Is he running? Yeah, he's running. Um, this is the start of the festival and um, 2008 and um, they have these little pacing tables with the, with the rockets on them and they, they like the touch paper and um, all hell breaks loose so everybody runs for their life. <laughs> well I wouldn't like to get too close to the next one which is obviously festival time again. A uh, lot going on here. Yeah it's, it's the same, same town, same festival and um, this is at two o'clock in the morning and the festival goes on from dusk to dawn the next morning. So this would have been Christmas, Christmas Day, I suppose. And uh, yeah, they're just taking down some fireworks. A lot of energy in the next one as well. Again, obviously flash used here, but full of energy, lots going on again. Yeah, that's right. It's, um, it's the same technique, rear shutter sync flash and um, just trying to get in in amongst the action I suppose um, just waiting for things to happen but but the, the slow shutter speed and the flash does some weird things you see the guy on the right hand side you know, his legs are sort of all, all twisted up that that's just the result of the, of the slow shutter speed and, and flash same with the next one I suppose um, again, yeah uh, a lot going on what's he why is he jumping this chap well, uh, the, these tables where they put the rockets, if they, if they don't go off, they collect them and then they, they let, let them off by hand. So he's, he's, on, he's come across the tables with, with um, some of the rockets. So I just, yeah, just happened to be there and I, I took his picture. And again with the next one, um, I've been trying to analyse why I like this image. <laughs> it's just something about this guy, isn't there? Why yeah, did you take it? Yeah, yes, it's serious. I've just taken the people that I found interesting, but this technique of the, the rear shutter sync, um, because it's such a slow shutter speed, everything is still moving, and um, where the flash hits, it freezes that 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 motion. Um, so I, I just like the the, the skies and the, and the blurred buildings, and. Um, I've frozen this guy, and I like the black mark on his hat. You know, I've been hit by, you know, by some fireworks, and um, yeah, he, he's one of the guys that let, lets the fireworks off. Yeah, he looks important. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, we'll be taking questions fairly soon, so 
If anyone has a question for Steve, do start typing them into the chat bubble at the bottom of the screen. Street, travel, documentary, monochrome versus colour, printing, whatever you like. I think Steve's tough enough to cope with almost anything. Um, now, let's have a look at a few images now then, Steve, from the UK. Okay. Uh, Brexit, never gone away, has it? Yeah, sorry, please, I missed that. Brexit, never gone away, has it? No, no it hasn't gone away. And <clears throat> the, it's the, the passion from either side. Um, actually, I saw m m m more passion from the Europeans, I suppose, than the, the, the Brexiteers. But um, I particularly like this one, because the guy on the left, you, I think he's been seen in, in some pictures before. There's a guy in the middle. You know, I call this the debate. The, you know, the guy on the left wants an answer, the guy on the right is giving it, and the guy in the middle is li listening in on the conversation. Um, so for, for, for me, it's got a, a, you know, a strong narrative. Absolutely, and the location's important as well. I mean, for a photographer like you, um, Brexit must have produced fairly rich pickings. Well, um, I've, I've yet to, to find out, Peter, because um, a lot of them were shot on film, and a lot of them are still in the freezer in the dark room. And um, one of my jobs over Christmas is actually to develop the films and, and see what I have. You just made a new dark room, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a brand new dark room. Ah. And of course, Things though, they change daily, and here's one of the names from that time that you hear a lot less of today. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the right wing with Tony Robertson and uh, English Defence League. Um, the police were always very cautious of where they were um, in the Brexit demonstrations. They didn't give them a lot of room. Um, yeah, you got this guy. I couldn't not take it, really, and it had to, had to be taken. And as you say, people felt very, very strongly and of course they still do, don't they? Yes, they do. And um, yeah, it's divided, you know, it's divided the nations in, in, in many respects. And um, yeah, it's, and let's hope that's, that all heals up and, 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 and um, we move forward. But um, I, I took this and I've seen other pictures of this guy, but for me, it's the building behind, it's like a spaceship. Um, and I, I found it quite amusing. And now one from America, we have Trump Tower in a shot that sort of sums up the current presidency or was about to catch fire or so it seems. Yeah, I just, um, I, this was kind of a new camera. I went to America last September, October and, and my Canon um, 5D Mark III, um, it, it, broken down, the shutter um, need repairing. So I bought an EOS R um, Canon. So uh, this is taken with that. I, I just, we, traveling to Las Vegas um, from the West, the storms were coming in. And um, th this particular night, there was a big storm you know, um, coming towards the city. And it's at the time of night, it's twilight time, the, the, the point where the lights are switched on. Um, I went out and, um, yeah, I thought it sums up his presidency, really. Very stormy, isolated, and um, yeah. And now we're in San Francisco, and this is a great example, I think, of how to turn a, what could have been a simple street scene into a really fascinating image. Yeah, I, I think many people are frightened to shoot in, into the sun, but um, it, it can be a bonus in many respects. Uh, this is taking Fishman's Wharf, and. Um, San Francisco, but um, yeah, you just got to take them and hope hope you get the composition right. Well, it works, doesn't it? Mm. So now Bogota on Christmas Day last year, um, obviously made by the silhouette on the right. Yeah, we um, we flew to Bogota um, Christmas Eve last year, and it's a long flight, um, didn't sleep much, and um, we arrived there at four o'clock in the morning. And th that evening, that afternoon, we went up to uh, Montserrat, which overlooks the plain of Bogota. And um, I just I saw this image and had to take it. Um, it's, it's, it's where the cable cars come in into. So th th this young man here is queued up to 
to go back down to, on, on, the, on the cable car. But um, we've got the, the mountains, uh, sorry, the clouds moving across the city. And we've got the sun setting in, in the distance. Fabulous detail there. Mm. Okay, your last image is a rather odd one. What's happening here? A lot of people ask me that. Well, a few people, a few people ask me that, and my answer is I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes things happen, and you've, you've no idea. This was taken on the um, the Highway One uh, road trip last year, and uh, we, we stopped off several places on the on the beaches. And um, I just had to be walking past this guy, and he's sort of crawling around on on the ground. I thought that's unusual, but it's not until the young boys coming over the over the rocks did I compose the picture. Um, so whether we're stretching, I'm not I'm, I'm not quite sure. But um, we've got the high contrast lighting, and it's it's almost like a, a, a moonscape. But uh, I, I don't know why he's, I don't know why he's, he might be looking for a contact lens, Peter. I don't know. Or he could be exhausted. He could be. He <laughs> could be. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, well, now it's time for your questions. So, as I said earlier, please just type them into the chat bubble at the bottom of the screen and just short questions, if you will, rather than comments. Um, so, Steve, first one. Do you ever ask permission from people for, before taking their image? Well, <clears throat> if you, normally if you see a, a picture, especially on streets, um, if you ask, if you, if you ask, ask permission, the moment's gone. So, you, so generally, no, I don't. If you're doing street portraiture, you do, but I don't. I don't ask. Do you pay anyone to take their photograph? Uh, the first time I went to Cuba, I was told that if you asked to take someone's picture, you gave them a dollar, um, and up to any time. And um, I don't do it at all. Next question: Does anyone in, refuse in Cuba to let you take their photograph? Do they yeah. Have, yeah. No? Mm. They do. Yeah, they let you know. If they wave their hand and say, you know, no picture, you just re respect that. Yeah. Okay. Which place would you like to photograph which you haven't been to before? Where would you oh. like to go? Cuba. Because it's <laughs> <Paris>. <laughs> No, not <laughs> Cuba, anywhere else. <laughs> um, Greenland. I'd like to go to Greenland for some reason. Um, it's unique and it's individ individual and um, I, I, and it's completely different. You know, I'd, I'd like to do something completely different. What's your favourite camera of all time? <sighs> the Pentax 67 Mark II. And why is that? It's the, the image quality is, is superb. It's a big, heavy, it's like a brick. Um, it's very clunky, but it's um, it's a beautiful camera. Who inspires you in photography? That's a different, different one, that, isn't it? Um, I suppose in my early days, um, I mentioned this chap, Bill Carden, before. Um, he did a lot of social documentary photography um, in the north, and um, he did the, the old comrades meetings. And he's just a, a wonderful photographer and a wonderful man. And um, I just, um, yeah, he, he's inspired me. But also, if you look back at the, uh, I think we spoke about this before, the Best of Life magazine, where you had these old photojournalists um, shooting, shooting pictures for the for, for Life magazine and time. And so some of those magical moments that, that they've caught. So photojournalist pictures, really. What advice would you give to anyone wanting to progress from street type photography to pure documentary? I think with documentary, you've really got to, to embark on a lot of planning, a lot of research, and, and, and be quite clear on your aims and, and objectives, what, what you're trying to achieve. Um, it, it's, all, it's all about planning. And um, I mean, with that, Beneath the Games Umbrella, that as a body of work, I should have planned it better. Um, and that, that's one lesson I learned is next time I do something, um, I'm, I'm not going to do it last minute. I'm going to give it a lot of thoughts 
and approach it differently. So planning. Um, next one, did the boxer know that he was on the front cover of the journal? No, he didn't know. He you just sent him a copy then, won't you? If, if I go back, if, yeah, I have, a, I have a spare copy. If I went back to um, Havana, I would find him and okay. uh, give him a copy. Do you process all your own films? Yes, I do. What is your current project? Um, L London, the London project is, is I think, is a lifetime project. And as I said, I've, I've got about 50 rolls of film in the freezer that have yet to be, uh, to be developed, including um, Chris Eubank. I've got him in outside of, you know, a shop in New Bond Street. I've got, from the, from the night that we, we left Europe, um, was it December last year, was that Peter? You're, you're, the, you're the expert. But it, it, it was at night. And um, again, I use Riz Trust Zinc with um, black and white film. So they've yet to be developed. Have you ever been stopped by police in London for taking images? Not in London. Anywhere else? Scarborough. <laughs> I, I was taking pictures. I, I, I suppose I was trying to do a Martin Parr on, on the Scarborough beach. Actually, it wasn't on the beach. I was on the promenades. And um, when we left Scarborough, I'll say we, my, my wife and I, um, as we were leaving Scarborough, we got pulled over by a police car. Then a police van arrived, then another police car. Uh, so we had three, three police vehicles asked me why I was taking pictures on, on the beach. So I had to get my RPS card out and show them that, you know, I'm, I'm not... Uh... Kosher. <laughs> yeah. And um, they actually looked through all my images and said, no problem, we've got to be careful here because they've had problems in Scarborough. It wasn't a very nice feeling. Um, my wife was very upset about it all, and we were on our way to Scotland. And um, yeah, you feel you feel guilty like you've done something wrong, but you've only taken pictures in, in, in public. But it just goes to prove you've got to be careful. Were you tempted not to show them your images? Um, not really, because I had nothing to hide. But have they got the right to do that? Probably not. No, no, they've got no rights. Okay, next one. What's your favourite image, the, the favourite image you've ever taken? That's a difficult one. I think the Death in Soho one is is ah, right. probably one of my favourite images. Mm. It's um, a pure documentary, pure streets, um, just a, a moment in time. And I so suppose being there, what, what actually happened and um, the effort that the two young policemen were we're trying to revive the guy. Yeah. So it brings back a lot of memories as well. Have you taken any COVID images? No, I haven't, because I think half the world's taking COVID images. Um, and I, I don't think I could bring anything to it. Because also I was building my dark room during that period. And we're supposed to be we're supposed to stay at home. We're not supposed to be out and about. So no, I haven't taken any. Well, that's true. Uh, next question. Can you explain why you prefer film over digital? I don't say I prefer film. Um, I just think it's just a, a different technique. It's a different tool. Um, film does suit social documentary and, and street photography. And I do enjoy producing you know, silver prints from, from the dark print. But there's not, nothing wrong with, with the digital photography. How do you decide on a project? How do you decide what to do? Um, I, I suppose it, it's like the Cuba um, series of work. Once you go there and you shoot a few images, um, you start to have thoughts, how, how you can use the images. And it, it's a natural evolution of, of an idea and it just progresses. Um, it's a bit like London, Oxford Street. I've got lots of images there of London. And you just keep adding to it. What was the last photo book you bought? Um, we'll amuse ourselves while you... Ah, oh, here we are. Excellent. It's um, 
it's it's Cold Town by Mick Critchlow. Critchlow, sorry. Fantastic um, photographer. He gave he gave a talk to the um, documentary group um, last week, I think it was. So yeah, that's um, a pure documentary picture. That book. Okay. Have you ever failed doing a project? Has it never quite worked out the way you wanted? No, no. Uh, I don't think I've ever failed. I think um, sometimes they don't work out quite as well as you think. But you, 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 once you embark on a project, you, you've got to just stick with it. So final question. What about a third fellowship for you? Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's on the cards. That's on the cards. But let's um, leave it at that for now. But yeah, yeah, because I, I like working in bodies of work. I like projects, and um, it's something to aim for. So there's a bit of a hint there. It could be in the documentary genre. Have you got one in fine art and one in travel? Mm -hmm. You're not telling us any more, though, are you? No, not at the moment. No. <laughs> Well, Steve, thank you so much. It's all we have time for. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and learn about your photographic practice. So thank you so much for being with us and the very best of luck for the future. All right, Peter. Thanks very much. And I'd also like to give my grateful thanks to the production team throughout this series, Stuart Wall, ARPS, and Andy Moore, LRPS, for all their work behind the scenes. And a big thank you to everyone who's watched or taken part in our talks during 2020, either live or later on YouTube. Thousands of people have participated one way or another, and it's been great to have you all along. But for the moment, it's goodbye from the Royal Photographic Society. <laughs>